Hey guys, Dean here with Busted a Buffed. I get a lot of y'all asking questions about this Wagner sprayer and my mixture and stuff, and I've been very reluctant on doing a tutorial video on how to use this because there are hundreds of videos out there on how to use this, and they all pretty much read off the directions of the Wagner of how to use it the correct way, and that's not how I use it. So I didn't really want to post a video of showing you how I do it because it's not the recommended way to use it, but y'all keep asking, so I decided I would go ahead and show you how I use this Wagner spur. Okay, when most people think of a spray gun, this is the first thing that comes to their mind, something that plugs into an air hose. There's a lot of situations where these work great and these are the best, especially for like doing automotive paint and stuff like that. But since they use a compressor and use high pressure, it puts a lot of overspray in the air. As y'all see, I've been using this gun in my garage for two years now, and you don't see a bunch of paint on everything in the background. If I use a gun like this in here all the time, everything in this garage would be coated in overspray. All right, and this is by no means a sponsorship or a paid video by Wagner. I wish I was getting paid for it. If you, I know if you've been painting with a brush for a while or you're new to furniture painting, this can be kind of intimidating, but no joke. This will speed the process up fourfold easily. But to make it a little less intimidating, I'm gonna break it down part by part. It really is very simple and simple to use. First thing is our housing. This is just a glorified, think of an electric fan inside of it that blows air out the front. Whenever the air comes out the front, it runs over the nozzle where there's paint, and as the air comes over, it creates a suction and it throws paint out onto your furniture. Now we have an adjustment on top of the blower. It just goes from zero to eight, and it just changes how much air comes out the front of it. All right, on yeah, mine's looking pretty rough. It's about two years old. Hey, if anybody wants to help me out, I've got a new one of these on my Amazon wish list. Let's start with the pickup. This right here is how you pick up the paint. It goes in here. Now, most of the time, you're just going to have this facing forward the same way you're spraying, because once this is on here, most of the time, you're going to be spraying like this, and we want it to pick up the very last of the paint in the container, so we have it at this angle here. Now, if you're going to be spraying a ceiling or the top of walls, you probably want to turn it that way so that it's picking up the last of the paint here out of the container. Does that make sense? But most of the time when we're doing furniture, it's going to be lower than us. We're going to be facing down or straight on. So I just put it that way. Now on our switch here, I'll go ahead and put it together so you can see it just literally just, and it's together. All right, next we got this turn knob on the trigger. It's a glorified bump stop right here. If you turn it out, it just stops how far you can pull the trigger back. So it's helping you control how much paint's coming out. If you turn it in and can open the trigger all the way, it's going to spray all the paint. That's normally what I do with paint, but with polyacrylic, because it's so thin, you have to really control how much is coming out or you're gonna get a bunch of runs. So I'll really crank it back and I'll do some test patterns on cardboard before I start spraying the piece of furniture with polyacrylic. But when I'm doing paint, I just open it up so that I can use all of the trigger and get all of the paint. Okay, so on the front, see we got this nozzle. With it turned this way, we'll get a spray pattern that fans out like this. And if you turn it this way, we'll get a spray pattern that fans out like this. Now if you turn it halfway in between those two, you will just get a round solid chunk of paint. There is no right or wrong way with doing this. It really comes down to a preference and how you are how you like painting and how it's covering on your piece. Um, sometimes I will put it in the tight round where it lays down a lot of paint into a very small spot. If it's really hot out and I'm really trying to get some chalk paint laid down or trying to get some coverage. If I'm not using chalk paint, I'm just using regular paint. Usually I'll just go with a fan pattern and try to get it as smooth as I can. There's not a right or wrong way when you're doing the fan pattern. It's just your preference of how you want to, what's easiest for you going up and down or going side to side. But that's it as far as adjustments on this thing. Again, we've got we can control how much air comes out, we can control how far our trigger goes back, and we can control which direction it throws the paint. It's really that simple, guys. All right, well, some of y'all may be saying, well, a paintbrush is easy to clean. That's a lot of stuff. That's going to be hard to clean. It's really not. If you're using water-based paints, you can get away with using warm water to clean this thing out. Let me show you how easy it is to take apart. So we take our canister, rinse the paint out of it, take our pickup tube off, rinse the paint out of it, take our nozzle off. Rinse the paint off of these. Rinse the paint out of here. It really takes a few seconds. If you're using a water hose, you're using a sink, you can just spray it with warm water and it 
gets all the paint out of it. So I'll show you how to put it back together. Just take this piece, goes right there. This piece goes right there. Here, screw this back on. And it's back assembled again. I know it can be kind of intimidating, but this thing is very simple. And like I said, it's lasted me two years, maybe longer. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you Again, which this is just my way of doing it. It is not the correct way. If you watch other videos, they've got this little spout thing and they watch and they time it. And depending on how long it takes, that's how they thin it. Now, I don't get all into that. I literally go through here. I put a half inch of water in here and then I fill it up my paint and then I mix it. Usually not even with a paint stick. I usually use a screwdriver <laughs> just mix it. So again, about a half inch of water in the bottom paint. And that's worked for most of my mixes. The chalk paints, uh, my rust-oleum paints that I use, the furniture paints, I just thin it up a little bit so it's easier to blow through the gun. Um, but that mixture works majority of the time for me. Now, and again, not saying that is the correct way to do it, is the way you should do it. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. But the polyacrylic, I do not add water to. It is already very thin on its own. You're actually going to have to turn the air way down and, and stop your trigger from opening all the way to spray polyacrylic and not get runs because it's very thin on its own. But everything else, I just add about a half inch of water to the bottom of this. Also, I do not use oil-based products in this. It would be a nightmare to clean. I know there's they sell this to use you know, oil-based stains to do fences and stuff like that, but uh, it would be a nightmare to clean up out of this, so I don't use any oil-based products out of this spray rig. Okay, another question that I get a lot is what chalk paints do I use? Most of the time, if you see me using white, I'm using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I can easily just run down to Home Depot, pick it up for $19 a can. Uh, if you keep an eye on Amazon, you can get these on sale for 10 or $11 a can. I'll use a buy six or seven of them at one time whenever they go on sale. It covers amazingly. It's easy to work with. I love this stuff. But the only problem with this stuff is there's only like four colors. They've got a white, a charcoal, a light gray, and I think a black. Whenever I need a odd color, I go with the bare chalk paint. It doesn't cover as well as this. It still covers great. This is just very thick in comparison to this, but this still works great. But Home Depot can mix whatever color of my imagination you can come up with in this stuff. So I love it for that. Okay, I'm going to show you how I mix this stuff. So like I said, I've got my half inch of water right here. So about right there. You can see that. I've got my chalk paint. There you go. Got my fancy paint stirrer stick. All right. That's it, we just spray and go. So there you go guys, that's how I use my Wagner spray rig. Um, I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. I'm also not getting sponsored by Wagner. I wish I was, because it'd be nice to get paid. <laughs> but and you can't argue with it. I've been using it for two years and it hasn't failed yet. It's probably about time to replace the end and stuff, but I mean, it still works. Again, I know it can be kind of intimidating looking at it with all the switches and levers and parts and stuff, but you see once you break it down, it's just, it's very simple to use and it can speed up your process and make life a lot easier and clean up on this thing is a breeze takes as long to clean this as it does to clean all the chalk paint out of a chalk paint brush. So I hope that helps y'all out. Um, I hope I covered everything. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how I did with this and uh, make sure I covered everything for you. If there's anything else you'd like to see covered, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Thanks guys. Okay, as you've seen, I got it sanded down smooth, got it distressed, it looks aged, kind of farmhouse looking to it. If you're a beginner, starting off with chalk paint is very forgiving because even if you screw up with the way you put on the paint and you get a little bit of a dry spot or orange peel spot or a run, see, so just sand it down, it turns into a powder and just And you can correct it and then if you need to put another coat on it, put another coat on it. It's really easy to work with. Um, latex paints you can't do that with because it will start peeling as you're sanding it. So the chalk paint is very forgiving for first timers. So we got it sanded, we got it primered, we've got paint on it, we've got it distressed. Now it's time to seal the chalk paint. And I always get a lot of people asking me about wax products because they see a lot of the other channels using wax products, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just my preference. I don't want to use it. First reason, it's a lot of work. I mean, it is 
you're like getting in there with it and I'm out on doing all that. And also if you read the directions, a lot of the wax products say that it has to be reapplied every two years. And there are also certain cleaning products that you cannot use on pieces that have wax on them. When a customer comes to buy something from me, I don't want to have to tell them, hey, you have to bring it back in two years so we can reapply wax or you can't use this on there, you can't use that on there, or they're having to message me every time they want to clean it, asking me what they can use on it. I prefer just to use polyacrylic. It's just a matter of spraying it on. Now we know what this piece is going to be used for. It's going to be used at events. It's going to have drinks on it. It's going to have people against it. It's going to be a high traffic area. So I'm going to do two heavy coats of polyacrylic on it to try to give it some protection. I go back and forth between using semi-gloss and satin on my pieces. It just depends on the piece. This one I'm going to use a semi-gloss on because it, I want it to have a little bit of a shine and it's also going to make it easier to clean. With using this polyacrylic, whatever they normally use in their house to clean their furniture, they'll be fine to clean it with this on there. So they're not going to have to ask me for that stuff and it doesn't ever have to be reapplied again. Once it's on there, it's on there. It's good. I've heard some people talk about this stuff yellowing. I think that's like a old school idea. I have pieces that are five, six years old and they still have not started yellowing yet. So maybe after 10 years they'll start yellowing. I don't know. Now again, we're not going to add any water because this stuff is so thin already. So we're just going to put it in our paint container. And even though we may not use all of this, I still pour it all in there just so I can keep a good mixture. Again, for using the polyacrylic, like I was saying earlier, adjust this trigger way out because we need, we don't need very much polyacrylic coming through the gun at all because it's almost water thin. And then I'm also going to start with turning my airflow down to about four. I must put something up, a board or something here, and I'm going to do a little test sprays before I put anything on the piece. And you don't want to try to cover a ton with this polyacrylic. If you want to build up layers like I'm going to on this piece for uh, protection, do that. Just build up layers. Don't don't try to put a big, thick, heavy layer on at one time. More than likely, you're going to get runs, and then it's going to be a pain to fix the runs. It's not like the chalk paint. You can still wet sand it out, and, and it is fixable. Why cause extra work for yourself if you don't have to? Now I'm going to turn the flow down a little bit more. I don't need that much coming out. Like I said before, the temperature where you're at is going to make a big difference on how this stuff lays down. If it's really cold, you're going to have to go a lot lighter. If it's really hot, you can get away with a little bit heavier because about the time it hits, it's already going to start drying. So temperature makes a big difference. So I've got my airflow set on four and my knob's about yay far out. That's not a good, I know it's not a good indication, but you shouldn't set it up the way I did. You need to do it this way because with your gun being newer, maybe being a different design, there's a lot of variables. It, depending on the mixture of your polyacrylic and the age of it, there's a lot of different variables. So just test it out on a piece first. Like I said, you don't need it real heavy. You can actually go even lighter in this if you want to and just build up layers. You don't want to go real, real light with it though, where it's just spraying a dust because that's probably whenever you get done, when it dries, when you put your hand on it, it's probably going to have a texture if you just start dusting it like really super light. So you still want it to go on wet. You don't want it to go on what they call dry. Here, I'll show you dry. That would be going on dry. And more than likely when it dries and you touch it, it's going to have a texture to it when, if you're spraying it on dry like that. It still needs to go on wet. You just don't want it so wet that it's running. Hope that makes sense. Now I'm going to do the top first, just that way I don't have to worry about touching the sides as I'm doing the top. You're going to see me put it down a little heavier on the top because it's a flat surface. It'll set. I don't have to worry about runs. I won't put it on as heavy on the side, but the top I do want heavy coats on because this is going to be our highest traffic area. We know they're going to be setting glasses, bottles, margarita machines, everything up on top of here. So we want it to have as much protection as it can. One of the cool things about using polyacrylic as well is all your distressed areas are going to change color whenever you start adding this. It's cool. It's going to add like another layer, another dimension to it. See how this all of a sudden starts getting darker? Whenever I hit it, it's really cool. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back out here and put a second layer on it in a little bit. That's the nice thing about polyacrylic too. Polyurethane takes 
hours to dry and it takes days to harden. This is already starting to dry. I could probably touch it right now. I'm not going to, but I could probably touch it right now to be fine. It will dry in minutes over hours, like polyurethane. So let me cover it real quick while I'm thinking about it. Polyacrylic is a water-based poly. With this crystal clear polyacrylic, you can get away with you doing like paints like white and light colors and stuff. Polyurethane has a little bit of a gold tinge to it. So it's going to change the colors of your pieces and make them look. If you put polyurethane on this white, it would look pea yellow by the time you got done. The crystal clear polyacrylic, you can see it goes on crystal clear. Polyacrylic dries really fast. Polyurethane takes hours to dry and takes days to harden. Polyurethane is a lot stronger. Polyurethane is what you would find on wood floors in a house. It will hold up to some serious abuse, even though it takes longer to dry. When it does dry, it is a hard protective shell. The polyacrylic is not. It, it is a good protection, but it will not protect as hard as polyurethane. It will not get as hard as polyurethane. So there's pros and cons to both. For what we're doing with furniture, I love using polyacrylic. And using like the furniture paints, not the chalk paints, all the chalk paints need to be sealed, but just using a, a normal furniture paint like y'all have seen in some of my other videos, I could just put that on and be fine. I've done that before. I have some pieces that just have furniture paint on it and they, they've held up really great. But I still like to put a layer of poly acrylic on it just for that extra added protection you see it doesn't take very long to do it there's no reason to not do it if it'll add extra protection you know what i mean and a lot of times too i'll use the polyacrylic to achieve a look i'm looking for let's say i'm using a oops paint and it's very glossy and shiny i can go through and use a satin polyacrylic on top of it and turn it into a satin color or a matte color so i can change the appearance of furniture with the poly as well Two coats and done. 